Hello everybody and welcome to this video of myself and Nick Carpenter and um, we are going to talk about the P word, the, 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 the dirty P word. The dreaded P word. The dreaded P word, which actually is probably uh, one of the best things you can do to help yourself, which is yeah. obviously practice. Now, we're going to talk about this, but there's, there's good and bad practice, right? Nick? Oh, that's, that's the outset, isn't it? Absolutely. And without question, good and bad practice. And, and the, the older I am, <laughs> the, the, the older I am, the more I realise that, that it, this is practice as a technique you have to learn as well. Um, and and uh, you see young uh, kids, these, some young kids these days, and they're playing fantastically well, and they seem to be able to do everything rather brilliantly. And, and, and it make, uh, I've been thinking, well, how come? Because you're not born with an ability. I, I absolutely don't, be, I, I almost don't believe in the word talent. They've yet to discover a talent gene. Um, you're not born playing out, being able to play the clarinet, you learn it. And some people seem to learn it quicker than others. And what is it? What is it? And I absolutely, it comes down to this word, practice and focus and concentration. And what is good practice? As you said, good practice and bad practice. And, um, and I've been doing a lot of thinking about it, and my students are really fed up with me going on about it. But I think there are, there are, there, if I'm going to say two things about practice, the first would be practice the things you can't play, not the things you can play. And the second would be to practice at the speed of no mistakes. And if you do those, you'd be amazed at how much quicker you learn things. Um, so whether it's scales, preparing for an exam, you've got to learn, I don't know, F minor. And you can either go at it like a bull in a china shop and with mistakes and, and, and it's not, oh, it doesn't feel right and you wonder why you can't, you're struggling to learn it quite so quickly. Or you can play it slowly and accurately every single time. It doesn't matter if it's really slow. I mean... That speed, but if it's always correct, what you are doing is internalizing the correct movements, the correct feeling in your embouchure, the correct movements of the fingers. You're, of course, trying to make a beautiful sound, play it legato, but, um, or, and, and you are internalizing it correctly. And our brain only learns what we repeat. So if we repeat something correctly 20 times, our brain will learn it. If we play it, 20 times and every time it's slightly different, it's this wrong note or that wrong note, and, and that's what our brains will learn. Um, so it's absolutely fundamentally important that you practice at the speed of no mistakes. That might be incredibly slowly to start with. You know, if you're learning Finzi's Carol, if it's that speed, that's the speed it needs to be. But at least you are always playing it with the correct notes and the correct rhythm and thinking about a beautiful sound. And, and if you do that, actually, in the long run, you will learn things much quicker. So if we take a, just a practical example, I'm trying to think of a question that someone watching this may come up with. If, you, uh, if you've got a fairly lengthy piece and there's a particular four-bar area, will you break down that four-bar into that slowest speed without issues and just work consistently on that bit and yes. then reintroduce it at pace? Because what commonly how we hear it, people play, 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 all the hard bits coming. I'll either just race through it and kind of hope it works. Exactly. Or, exactly. or I'll slow down. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, you've got to find the problem, you know, sort that and, out. And yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, let's say you're you, you, no, we won't have been talking, I've been thinking. A classic example of that would be you're doing the first movement of Sans Sans Sonata for grade six. Okay, and we all know it starts... And so in the first, the first kind of five or six lines, they're actually very straightforward. The problem with that movement comes in the central section, okay? Um, and once you've learnt the first bit, you've also learnt the, 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 the last That's bit, bit yeah. because it, it repeats, okay? So, but how many people do you hear, oh, I did, I did some practice today, and they practice that bit, and then exactly as you say, you get to the central section, it goes a bit of a mess, the skate over it, oh, I'll go back to, I can play the bit, I like playing the bit, I can play, you know? <laughs> So, absolutely, if it was me, and I was confronted with a, a, a piece where there's a few lines here and a few lines there, which I'm struggling with, 
Those are the bits I focus on. That happens so many, so many times in the orchestra. You'll get a, a new piece of music and, and actually look through it. Well, that's fine. I can play that bit. That, that looks really nasty. Okay, so that's the bit I focus on. And so with that first movement of the sound song, I would focus on whatever it is. If there's a, I think there's a, a D flat major scale in there. So at one point, there's the, the passage. There, that passage there. A lot of people struggle with that. Okay, so you break it down, slow it down, slow it down. So you are absolutely learning the right notes in the right order um, and doing it several times, 20, 30 times, slowly and, would you and correctly. Play through that whole whole passage no, or I would pick make, it down to groups? Exactly, yeah. I would break it down into groups so that that, uh, that bar that I've just played is actually four different types of arpeggios. So I'd make sure I've got each single one absolutely correct. I know exactly what my fingers are doing. Do that several times and then the next one. And then put those two together slowly, always playing the right notes. And, and so on, you build it up gradually. You can do, in, introduce different rhythms, introduce all, all sorts of different ways of, of practicing, but always playing the right notes. Whatever speed it is, find your kind of, uh, the, to find your terminal velocity for that day. What's the f kind of the, com the speed you play that comfortably at? As soon as you start making mistakes, you know you're going too fast. So always at the speed of no mistakes and gradually building it up repeating it correctly. Um, and there's another technique, and while we're discussing practice, I'm going to bore you on sorry. No, go for but, it. But, but um, um, what I, again, talk to my students about is the idea of playing something with either, in, in a, practicing it with what we call blocked repetition or spaced repetition. Um, and the two different techniques of practice are useful at different stages in the learning process. So when you're learning something for the first time, yes, you need to repeat that over and over um, uh, just to really get it in the fingers, slowly, slowly. But once you've got beyond that stage and you want to kind of consolidate your learning, then, what, and, and so that initial process I, we, I would call blocked repetition, just repeating it. Uh, but once you've got beyond that and you're, you, you're, you're comfortable with the music, but you're just, you want to make sure that you've got all the different, um, uh, the, the progress of the, the music, you, then we can go on to what, what I call spaced repetition or what's known as spaced repetition. So you would practice one bit here, then you would jump over the page and play that bit there, then come back to here. The reason being that actually um, to really strengthen, reinforce the learning process, um, uh, uh, forgetting and retrieving is how we actually learn. And it's to do with the way I, I, I know nothing about, nothing about the brain whatsoever, but apparently every time you retrieve a bit of information, a, a, a pathway, a neural pathway in the brain is... is strengthened or reinforced and if you're always doing it the same and forgetting and retrieving um, then those pathways are strengthened and you won't it's much more difficult to learn so again our brain learns what we repeat and when we forget it and then retrieve that information that's how our brain learns so the idea of always playing correctly so our brain always learns the correct um, messages and then forgetting, retrieving, dotting around. Once you've learnt it, going here, you know, you might have five or six different passages, and passage A you play a few times, then you go to passage B, then you go to passage C, then go back to A, and then go to passage D, always playing at a speed. And it's that process of forgetting it and then retrieving that really speeds up, really speeds up the learning process. Well, and I, <clears throat> I presume, essentially, the, the idea of all of that is that you get to the point where you can think about point three, which is the musicality side of things. Of course. Because when those things are under the fingers and retrievable, as you've discussed, presumably that's when actually the music making starts and, and the function ends or ceases to be the primary factor. Absolutely. I mean, ultimately, you know, what we want to be able to do is not worry about those technical passages that are coming up on the next line. If you are confident about being able to play those notes, then that performance anxiety can be a, a positive thing. It can help your help your, your your performance. It kind of increases your sense of concentration um, and, and and being in the moment. Um, whereas, and that will come through having really practiced 
and internalized whatever music it is to a point where you know you can play it correctly. Um, and, and it's absolutely fundamental. I think I've said to my students, 95% of people's progress happens between the lessons. It's what you do between the lessons that is so important. And, um, and, and your teachers will guide you and help you and show you the right direction. But then, as I say, it's what you do in the practice time. If you learn how to practice correctly and, 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 and do it, then the sky's the limit. And that's yeah, a passionate believer in that. I think you're definitely in the, an effort pays dividends, doesn't it? You yeah. know, and like yeah. you've discussed at the very beginning of this video, I, I, I hold similar beliefs, you know, that actually by that effort you can take yourself to a mm. certain level, whatever that may be, mm. and, and the rest, you know, comes with the hard work, doesn't it? Yeah, so it yeah. uh, hopefully that's given you some inspiration to go and practice. Don't worry about the fact <laughs> you've just spent five minutes watching this when you could have been... No, I'm joking. <laughs> this will pay back three times as much. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's important to practice correctly. Correct. And maybe a couple yeah. of things we've talked about in this video will help you go away and, and do that. So yeah. that's the aim. Good. Uh, but we should be back uh, with more videos very soon, so do stay tuned for more from myself and from Nick Carpenter as well.